What's up everyone, this is Hemorrhoid, aka Deep Fryer, bringing you one of those super string videos that you love to see. So it's been a hot minute since I've spoken with you guys. Things do have a tendency to get kind of busy around here. Um, now, I hope you guys are doing fantastic. Before we get into today's video, I do want to mention that the anniversary event for the super string video game is coming up. Um, I originally thought the anniversary event was going to be May 20th, but uh, just today I saw a post on Facebook where I think they may have moved it to June 13th, or maybe that's just the day it ends on. I'm not really sure, so, you know, I need to double check some of those dates. But regardless, uh, the anniversary event is coming up in just a few short weeks, uh, and basically GM Hasty made a post uh, teasing what some of the new content is likely going to be. We are likely getting at least one, possibly more characters from the Jungle Juice series. Now, I know a lot of people in the unofficial Superstring Discord have been very excited because apparently this is a very popular series and there are some beloved characters in this series that everyone is excited to see in the Super String game. So, uh, uh, check my link in the description below to head on over to the unofficial Super String Discord. I'm a member there. We have a lot of people there that are very friendly, very helpful, and I think you guys will have a great time hanging out with us there. Uh, now, today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Abyss Stage 40. That's right, we're continuing our Abyss series. Now, Stage 40 uh, was is one of those abyss stages that if, if you are somewhat of a newer player, I mean, you're not too new if you're on Abyss 40, but if you have freshly come to Abyss Stage 40, this is a stage that can really give you some trouble. Now, this was an especially difficult stage before the developers released the Awakening Universe bonuses for our agents. Uh, but now, the stage is just a little bit easier with those awakening bonuses, but you still cannot go to sleep on this stage because they will make you feel the pain if you are not ready. So get ready, we're going to jump into Abyss Stage 40. Now, the additional threats for this stage, are you ready? Here they are, I'm going to pop it up on the screen. Uh, but I'm just going to tell you from memory, every 10 turns, your unit with the lowest hit points is going to die. It doesn't matter if they're dropped to zero hit points or not, they're going to die every 10 turns. So that is already a little intimidating. If that wasn't enough, the enemy boss is Sando, and as you all know, Sando has some devastating single target attacks. And the boss is also going to be invulnerable until the other enemy units are dead. So, you can imagine you have to... This can be kind of a DPS check, uh, because you have to be able to take the enemy out quickly, because your team is going to be dying at least one unit every ten turns. And there's no way to avoid that, so... You can't use any kind of sustain strategy or go with, you know, super tanky units to kind of outlast the enemy. You cannot do that here. You have to go all in. You have to take the enemy down quickly. So in order to do that, the team that I used last time I did Abyss Stage 40, now I do plan to use a bit of a different team this time, uh, but last time the team I used here is uh, Sando, Wansu, Kira, and Uchida. Now, one big key to the way I did it using this team is you want Kira to go second after Uchida. Because if you make Kira go second, Kira will be the first unit to die, but you drop Kira to one hit point anyway. So you, you only have a small window of time to try to maximize your use of Kira. And Kira is kind of just, uh, I guess you would say, um, expendable after she's done her job. So, and you also want to use Kira to proc Kang Suki's retaliation so that Kang Suki 
who would normally do a lot of damage with her retaliation to one of your units, you want her to do that damage to Kira right before Kira dies. And you'll see what I mean. Let's just go ahead and jump in. Let's start the footage, and, and you will see exactly what I mean. So, um, like I said, uh, this can be a very difficult stage if you are not prepared. So let's take a look at what happened. Now, I got very fortunate with a full proc of Freeze on turn one. Of course, we go Immortal with gear. Now, you don't have to have that full proc on Freeze, but it definitely helps. Now, I actually like to try to take out Munsu here, uh, because... He, he just gives me a lot of trouble for some reason. I've seen people take out all kinds of different enemy units first. I like to take out Munsu with this setup first. So, you know, whatever, whatever you need to do, you can tinker with it a little bit, but this is just how I did it. Uh, so I chose to do some more damage to Van. I, I was actually trying to one-shot Van with, uh, with Sando's skill too, but it didn't happen. But at least uh, Munsu is dead. Now, as you see, we're using Kira's ultimate in order to bring Kang Suki to one hit point, she's going to do the retaliate, and now Kang Suki has one turn of immortality. It's only one turn, it's not the two turns. Thank goodness. Because this stage would be a lot more of a headache if, uh, if Suki had two turns of immortality. Now, the enemy, Sando, really tried to lay the hurt on my Uchida, and she did, but fortunately, Uchida survived with just a little bit of hit points left, because we were able to... Uh, I actually w was trying to kill Suki there in one move with Uchida, but that didn't happen. But as you can see, the enemy units are now dead, except for the boss Sando. And Sando... Ideally, you would have wanted Sando to target one soul here instead of your Sando, but, you know, that didn't happen, so we have to work with what we're given. It can be a little unpredictable as far as who Sando targets because as your units kind of fluctuate in their hit points throughout the fight, that is going to change who Sando targets. So it's really hard once the fight has progressed and everyone has taken damage, it's hard to predict who Sando's going to target. But as you saw, Sando sent one soul into his immortality and one soul's cooldowns reset and we were able to use one Soul's ultimate with Savage 2 damage to deal 35% of the boss's hit points plus the skills damage as well in one shot. And we took down Abyss Stage 40. Now here was that Spring Roulette event that was running back a few weeks ago, so I mean I guess I'm kind of giving away that this footage is a little bit older, but hey, like I said, got busy. Um, not having quite as much free time to, to, you know, turn out these videos at the same rate I was doing before. But, I'm not giving up. I'm going to do my best to continue to bring you guys video content as often as possible. Because, we all know that we have a lot of fun with Super String content. Uh, if you noticed, I did get some Titan on the very first roll on that roulette wheel, so... That was a decent little reward. I'm also going to open this SSEX box for you guys. And what are we going to get? Shin Hale's Auxiliary Core, but no speed. So, you know, it probably got converted or something like that. So, anyway, there you have it, folks. There is Abyss Stage 40. Uh, I hope you guys can clear that stage because an SSEX Core box is a very valuable reward, a valuable prize, and a, a great way to expand your equipment. But anyway, that's where we are going to end this video. I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Maybe it'll be a BIS 41. Maybe it'll be a PvP video. I haven't decided, but I've got the footage for both. Until next time, I will talk to you guys later. This is Hemroid.
I want you to do me a favor. Yeah, sure. I want you to hit me as hard as you can. What? I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Mother! You hit me in the ear!